In this tutorial, we're going to be focusing on relative atomic mass, or AR for short, and the calculations associated with it. Now, relative atomic mass deals with the fact that in the periodic table, you've got some really heavy elements and you've got some really light elements. So the atoms of these elements do have different masses. Now, of course, the single atom of an element is really difficult to weigh. It's really, really small. There's no way you're going to be able to measure it in grams, for example. All right. So we need to look at individual atoms here and their masses. So to get over this problem, what we've done is we've given them relative amounts. Now, relative what to? That's going to come in the definition now. But before we start, I want to make sure that you understand that we are dealing with elements only here. OK, so we're not going to be talking about any compounds. We are only talking about elements and that is reserved for AR. Let's start with that definition, which is the mass of an atom of an element relative to one twelfth the mass of an atom of carbon 12. Now, don't worry yourselves about why carbon-12 was chosen for this purpose. It just was. So we have to deal with one twelfth of the mass of carbon-12 here to give us a single unit. OK, so learn this definition. It's really, really important. Absolutely fundamental. So, of course, there are going to be elements that are heavier than carbon-12 and elements that are going to be lighter than carbon-12. So, for example, we've got oxygen, which has a relative atomic mass of 16. We've got fluorine, which has a relative atomic mass of 19, and chlorine, which is 35.5. Now, of course, lighter elements exist, such as hydrogen, which is 1, 6.9 for lithium, and 10.8 for boron. OK, so you'll see these numbers in your periodic table, and they're there for you to refer to. You don't have to learn any of these. They are just there. Now, these numbers do have units okay so there is a unit for relative atomic mass and the units are grams per mole now i did say that you can't measure the mass of an atom in grams but if you have a mole of atoms then it becomes more viable for that purpose so what we're saying here is these relative atomic masses if you had one mole of lithium atoms, then it would weigh 6.9 grams. If you had one mole of boron atoms, it would weigh 10.8 grams. So there are units attached, but don't forget the relative atomic mass of a single atom is this number here. OK, now you'll notice that three of these aren't integers. They are uh, 0.5, 0.8 and 0.9. Now, if you think back to GCSE, you were told that this is a mass number. There's nothing wrong with that. But the thing is, we can't get 0.9 of a proton or 0.8 of a neutron or whatever you know goes towards that mass number. So these numbers don't make sense in that respect. What these numbers do is take into account of the fact there are different isotopes of these different elements. OK, so there are some boron atoms that have more or less neutrons in, same for chlorine and same for lithium. You'll find that most elements do have isotopes. So these numbers are an average of the masses of those different isotopes. So let's deal with what an isotope is, first of all. So if you're asked what an isotope is, these are atoms of the same element that contain different numbers of neutrons. OK. So what we're saying here is that they have the same number of protons, but a different number of neutrons, because, of course, it's the protons that dictate what the element is. OK, so, for example, uh, let's take chlorine from up here. I know for a fact that in the universe there are two major isotopes of chlorine, chlorine 35 and chlorine 37. Now, again, you'll notice same element, same number of protons here. We've got the proton number. But of course, this mass number is different. This isn't the relative atomic mass of chlorine, because like I said, that takes into account the average of these two isotopes. Chlorine 35 has a mass number of, of course, 35, all right, with 17 protons and the rest being neutrons. You'll notice there are two more neutrons in chlorine 37 compared to chlorine 35. Other than that, they are identical. They have the same physical and chemical properties. The only difference between them is, of course, there are two more neutrons in this one than this one. 
Likewise with lithium. I know that there is lithium six in the world and there is lithium seven. Again, both with three protons, just this time there's one more neutron in here compared to lithium six, okay? Now, most of the elements do have isotopes. These just have two different isotopes. Some elements have anything up towards nine or 10 different isotopes, okay? But I'm just using these ones because they're, uh, they're short examples for what we are going to do next. Now, if you remember what I just said, that these numbers here, these relative atomic masses that you see in your periodic table, are averages of the different isotopes of those elements, okay? So we need to know how to calculate the relative atomic mass of an element, and that is a pretty straightforward. Now to calculate the relative atomic mass of an element, you need to take into account two things. Number one, the masses of the different isotopes. Number two, their relative abundances okay so the relative abundances because you'd think that okay the average between 35 and 37 of the two isotopes would lie directly in the middle 36 now you'd be right in thinking that but then again this is 35.5 so the average between these two isn't 36 but 35.5 so it's got to take into account how much of these are in existence same for lithium okay so you'll notice that with this being 35.5 then the average would swing towards chlorine 35 which means most chlorine in existence is chlorine 35. the opposite is true here for lithium because it's 6.9 which lies between 6 and 7 of course most of the lithium in existence is lithium 7 so it drags that average up but how do we actually calculate it so what we do is we take the mass of the first isotope, multiply that by its percentage abundance, which you'll likely be given in an exam question, add that to the mass, mass of isotope two, multiply it by its percentage abundance, and then keep repeating this process until you've used all the available isotopes that you're given. Okay, so if it's three or four, you'll have three or four of these on the top line of your equation. Of course, once we've done that, we need to divide everything by 100 because all of these are percentage abundances, okay? So by way of an example, I know for a fact that 75% of all chlorine in the universe is chlorine 35. 25% is, of course, chlorine 37. So just to show you that this calculation actually works. So e.g., for chlorine, your relative atomic mass would be the mass of the first isotope, which is, of course, 35, multiplied by its percentage abundance, which is 75. Add that to the mass of isotope two, which is 37, multiplied by its percentage abundance here. And again, all over 100. And that, of course, equals 35.5. Let's not forget units at grams per mole. In terms of another example, what we've got here are uh, two isotopes of lithium. This is 7.59%, lithium 7, 92.41%. So our second example here of lithium, that's basically 6 multiplied by 7.59 plus isotope 2 multiplied by 92.41. Again, all over 100 and that gives us 6.92 grams per mole, okay? Which is a little more accurate than what you get in your periodic table, but you will find that, of course, that's your double check if you're ever calculating these. Now, importantly, these are associated closely with mass spectroscopy. So when you're looking at mass spectroscopy, it's likely you're going to have to do calculations like this, okay? So some questions ask you just to calculate the AR, and of course, that's got to be somewhere near what you get in the periodic table. Likewise, what they could do is ask you to find a missing isotope mass, okay? So if we didn't know the isotope, the second isotope of chlorine was 37, maybe that was an unknown, but you did know the overall AR, my advice to you is treat this like X, okay? Write this equation out with X in there, the unknown mass of isotope, then rearrange, okay? And you will find the mass of that missing isotope. And a little bit of common sense needs to be applied there because of course, it's not gonna be a number too dissimilar from the other isotopes of that element, okay? So overall, 
our relative atomic mass or AR deals with elements only. It's the mass of an atom of element relative to one twelfth of the mass of an atom of carbon 12 and the units are grams per mole. They take into account isotopes, which are atoms of the same element that contain different numbers of neutrons, for example here. And then last but not least, you need to know how to calculate your relative atomic mass given different isotopes and their percentage abundances.